previously in Spore. Having created a rip in the space-time continuum, the Council of Welks, a cult of the most heinous and evil creatures imaginable, have taken control of a portal-filled dimension known as the Menu. Using their new power, they have sent giant Welks to conquer not just their own universe, but every other universe in existence. There was now only one man who could stop them, a great hero who once saved his species from the brink of extinction. Who is this fabled saviour, this beacon of hope? Well, he was a pair. A pair named Fruitius Maximus. Since setting out on his intergalactic journey, Fruitius Maximus had travelled a long, long way through space. He now found himself atop a small hill on a planet inhabited by nothing more than snow and ice. This place wasn't very pleasant, but just as he was about to get up and leave, all of a sudden, his radio transceiver began to ring. It was his best friend in the world, Perfessor Layton. But instead of a happy reunion, the Perfessor brought terrible news. Apparently, Giant Welks were invading the entire universe, and in even worse news, his home, a place known as the Pearlanet Earth, had been torn to ruins. It was a massacre, the Pearfessor said, even worse than that one time with all of the evil bananas. This was bad. Fruitius had to do something, but he was so far away from anywhere and everything. If what the Pearfessor said was true, he couldn't do this on his own. He would need help from some of the universe's greatest heroes. The problem being that all of the heroes he knew of were either dead or missing. Thankfully, Fruitius had invented a time machine. Perhaps if he made a few tweaks to his spaceship, he could reprogram it to fly backwards through history, and this way he could find himself some allies. Putting his plan into action, Fruitius jumped aboard his ship and flew out into the great unknown. For some reason he chose to ride on top of his spaceship rather than inside it, probably because p pears only have short arms and it was easier just to put the autopilot on or, or something like that. Before he knew it though, the time machine had kicked in and his mission had begun. His first port of call was a place known as the Crustacean Nation. One of his old comrades, a crab known as Mr. Pinchy Jr. Jr., was rumoured to have been defeated here by none other than a group of pears. Fruitius didn't want to believe it. Pears were a peaceful species, and Mr. Pinchy was a wonderful little guy. He was convinced he was missing part of the story, and his suspicions were confirmed when he discovered the neighbouring village were under the control of a giant whelk. To think that members of his own species had been brainwashed by nothing but a big sea snail. He had to find some way to snap them out of it. Hmm, yes. There was only one thing for it. He would have to play some royalty-free music. On his planet, Pears didn't have any money, so they bonded through the shared experience of avoiding copyright. Fruitius opened up a maraca shop, and once everyone had an instrument in hand, they went over to the neighbouring village and played a bunch of the finest royalty-free tunes. This went down a huge success, and the Pears agreed to join Fruitius in his quest. To thank them, Fruitius bestowed them with a bunch of didgeridoos. Now it was time to get Mr. Pinchy on side. As one, they travelled over to Mr. Pinchy's settlement and held a concert full of yet more royalty-free vibes. Just as you would expect, the crabs were incredibly impressed, and Mr. Pinchy agreed to join Fruitius's crew. Now that everyone here was on the same page, there was only one matter left to deal with. The Giant Welk. Upon seeing it, Fruitius was scared. It was every bit as terrifying and intimidating as Perfessor Layton had described, but he was determined to save his home. And, with the combined strength of Mr. Pinchy and the other pairs, there was really nothing to worry about. Though the battle was arduous, the giant Welk was eventually defeated. Fruitius Maximus was filled with relief. Having great friends like Mr. Pinchy at his side was definitely the way forward. He shared his time machine technology with Mr. Pinchy and told him to meet him again on the Pearlanet Earth. 
he would have explained his plan in more detail, but crabs have very poor attention spans, and Mr. Pinchy wasn't interested. With this, they bid each other farewell. For Fruitius though, the journey was far from over, and his next stop was not the Pear Lanet Earth, it was in fact, the Bear Lanet Earth. Rumour had it that two great soldiers by the names of Barnaby Bear and Mr. Fish Fingers lived here. When he first arrived, however, he was greeted by a different face. A trout by the name of Timothy. Timothy Trout offered to guide Fruitius to the people he was seeking, but he warned him, things were not currently going so well. A war had broken out between bears and salmons, as, to quote Barnaby Bear, salmons were just too tasty and he couldn't resist. As they approached their destination, Fruitius experienced this animosity firsthand. He was caught in the middle of a huge battle, and, with no intention of being eaten just yet, he was forced to run away. It seemed he would have to greet them one at a time, and, when the fighting had died down, he went first to the Salmon Village. Fruitius befriended them using his signature pear charms. However, just as he began to teach them about the joys of royalty-free music, they heard battle cries from across the way. The bear village was being attacked by a giant whelk! Oh god, these whelks really were everywhere! But hang on, this was the perfect opportunity. Fruitius informed Mr. Fishfingers of the giant whelk's situation, and with great maturity, the salmon swallowed their pride put their beef aside, and marched on over to offer the bears support. Working as one, the salmons and bears were not just able to defeat one whelk, but two more after that. They were a ferocious team, and they fought with real tenacity. Well, actually, most of them just sort of waited around at the back, but the point still stands. Having now fought together instead of against each other, the bears agreed to stop eating salmons, and switched instead to a diet of whelks and honey. Fruitius Maximus had made two more allies, and, as before, he gave them each a time machine and instructed them to meet him on his home planet. Before that, Fruitius had to make one third and final stop, and in this case when he travelled through time and space, he arrived half submerged in the middle of the ocean. As he swam to shore and shook himself dry, he noticed, off in the distance, that someone was in trouble. A small, adorable elephant was fighting all on its own against three or four whelks. He rushed in to save it. Fruitius didn't understand how anyone could hurt a small elephant as cute as this. One by one, he took out the whelks, and once they were all defeated, he and the elephant made friends. The adorable elephant led Fruitius to what can only be described as an elephant utopia, and trading stories around the campfire. Fruitius found out that this elephant used to be the vice captain of a pirate ship. But he had been separated from his crew during a raid on a whelk village and hadn't seen them since. Fruitius and the rest of the elephants agreed to help find them. They set out as a group, and it wasn't long before they saw a mast and sail peeking over the horizon. As they got closer, they noticed a gang of penguins, shipwrecked and bobbing up and down in the water. This must have been the pirates they were looking for, but upon closer inspection, the captain was nowhere to be found. This was bad news, as Fruitius had been banking on recruiting Peter the Penguin as the final part of his task force. If only there were a way to find him. Oh, no, wait, there he is. With the addition of Peter, Fruitius' squad was now complete. He bestowed him with yet another time machine, and Peter and the Penguins fixed up their ship and sailed away. All that was left to do now was convene with everyone else on the Pear Lanet Earth. He arrived on his home planet for the first time in what felt like forever. Perfessor Layton was waiting to greet him, but immediately it was made obvious just how dire the Welk situation was getting. Straight away, Fruitius and the Perfessor had to save a bunch of plums from imminent extinction. Once the coast was clear, however, they travelled over to the meeting area. This was it. The greatest heroes from all around the universe gathered in one place. With these fabled protectors, they may just have a chance at salvation. Even so, there was only a few of them, and the odds were stacked heavily against their favour. But this was no time to get discouraged. Fruitius stood between them and began to speak. 
He gave a rousing speech, which I'm gonna have to cut for the sake of time. You're just gonna have to trust me here. The guy went on for like an hour. It was just a bunch of waffling, but with everyone pumped up and raring to go, they all jumped aboard Fruitius' spaceship and flew directly towards the giant rip in space. Well, they would have flown directly there if Fruitius hadn't been driving, but with his short arms, it was hard to go in a straight line. Eventually though, they took off into space and reached the mysterious realm known as the menu. As they flew further and further through it, the weather began to turn for the worst. Lightning struck the ship's hull, the pressure began to mount, and everything began to shake violently. Before they knew it, the whole ship burst into flames, and they were going to crash. They wouldn't make it, they were... <gasps> Fruitius awoke in a world like none he'd ever seen before. They had made it. Somehow, they had ended up in the Welk Zone.